Um, essentially, I'd been travelling. I came back to England um, a year and a half ago and wanted to do something in London. I'd been in Goa for quite a few months, been to parties there. Um, and wanted to bring this energy back to England, really. Um, and try to translate that into a London club scene. The energy there is to do with lots of people dancing on a beach where nobody has to go to work. Um, they're travelling completely cross cultured. Um, and to bring that into London. Where, with the confines of the club, where people have to work the next day, um, it was quite difficult. Why did you come here tonight? Because I have many nice friends here. And uh, yeah, it's a nice scene happening now. when you dance? Very good. I think it's uh, it's probably the strongest uh, deconditioning movement of modern history. When a whole generation has just been filled up with, with junk that you had to do leak out and that's why I think the whole acid movement in the form we know it today started. It's just nature's way of cleaning mankind so to say. That's why I think uh, everybody feels so good when they dance because you'll be able to toss out a lot of rubbish and just feel some kind of uh, unconditional love among the people. The music that we play is, is termed or called trance music. The way it dif differs from house music is that the same with the shamanistic thing, the shaman would, go, would take um, 
a psychoactive drug, whether it be psilocybin or whatever indigenous drug there is around in this particular area, and would lock into a trance. The same is true of this music. It's trance music, it's hypnotic. You don't just dance along with it, you lock into it, you completely... If you like lose yourself or the ego dissipates, you lock into the music, you are a part of the music, you're conducting the music if you like. You're selfless. That I can see possibly could be quite frightening to a lot of people, to let go of the ego, even if it's for five hours, to not know what they're doing, to have faith in a rhythm. That is the way it differs from house music, which is more melodic or techno music which is more um, to do with noise as opposed to music. To become entranced by the music means a surrender, a certain surrender to it. Um, you know, we surrender every day to advertising, we surrender every day to the colour of clothes that we wear, to the way we smile, think, breathe to the pollution that's in the air, we surrender to that, so why not surrender to a trance music? It's no more, no more abstract or strange than marching on an army parade ground. It's exactly the same thing. Um, a soldier will march and march and march and he'll feel extreme pain. And he'll go through that pain and keep on marching to the point where it becomes automatism. It's exactly the same principle. He will just go and go and go. And the march is inside him then. He's not marching any longer. You know, the two things are one. Okay, what's your name? Louisa. And uh, what are you doing here tonight? <laughs> Having a good time, really. <laughs> Catching up with friends and seeing everyone. Yeah. Um, have you been coming here often? No, I haven't actually. I've been, I've been away. But this is the second time I've been and it's, it's good. I really enjoy it. Um, what do you think of the energy generated here tonight? Yeah, it's pretty good, but it's very good music. It's absolutely something, stomping music. How do you feel when, when you dance? Oh, it's just great. Lock in, lock in with everyone else and just, just let yourself go, basically. It's wonderful.
you find you get to know people better through dancing than through talking? Well, you get to know them on a completely different level, really. You know, it's it's on a, it's on a, like a dancing buzz, and you completely lock into them. But it's on like a totally different way from if you're sitting talking to them. Some people you can like like dance with and know them on that level, but you never say a word to them. You just see them night after night. Say if you're in India or something. Come here often. Well, I've been following this party focal point, so I've been just following them basically. Wherever they go, I go. So, what what do you like about this place? Because no matter who you are, what you do, you can all join in and have some fun, basically, regardless. So, would you say there's a lot of different people here from a lot of different lifestyles? Definitely, definitely all over all different sides you know they all just come together and it doesn't matter we can all join and have some fun you know it's really great. <laughs> So what are you trying to do with your, your club? What, what's the whole emphasis on with regard to society, with regard to the people that come there, with regard to everything that you're actually trying to do with the music, with the lifestyle, with the whole scene, everything? Um, to promote positivity, basically. Yeah. To promote individualism, to promote free thinking, to promote uh, sort of some form of group unity, anything to bring... Basically, it's just trying to bring people together. Um, uh, firstly, with the club, we didn't. Have, I mean, we no resources to begin with. Lots of people with no resources, but between them, a lot of potential. So, I mean, I can see that, and a lot of us can see it. So, the first way we thought was bring it together was we were doing parties, and people were getting together, and socially they're interacting, but on on a, another level, they're not working they could be in a sense rather whereas they're on the dole or they're doing their thing or they've got a job or whatever um, they're living as individuals but they could work together better as a group and so basically we thought we run a club in the middle of the week to cater for all the people that are going to these parties to almost turn what might be their hallucinations of visual faces into just act physical people that suddenly they're in, in almost like maybe a pub situation or a chill out situation or they're on a dance floor where hopefully they haven't taken drugs where they can communicate with, with other people and go, oh right, so you're blah blah blah, oh, that's nice to meet you and it's, oh you do that and just to encourage networking really to sort of yeah. find people that someone does something and they could easily get it off someone that they actually dance with and so almost like a 
economics, but so we, we run the club, we run the club to get people to sort of communicate a lot more. <laughs> So uh, how do you see um, your role and, and Mark, your partner's role, um, with regard to um, helping people to uh, arrive at some sort of spiritual awareness? Um, I, d I don't know how I see it. I just see that or I feel that I'm just part of it, something I'm meant to do. I don't know what I'm meant to do. Something I'm meant to do is just to encourage people in a positive direction. I mean, I don't see that there's a role, it's just a, almost like a sense of a job to me. To me, I feel like it's a moral obligation, there's nothing else for me to do, but that's just my, sort of, my trip or my whatever. But I feel I just have to bring people together and sort of push people on and enc encourage their positive thoughts and their aspirations and try and bring them together to achieve it because I think that the sort of things that are floating around in their heads are something quite positive. Yeah. So if you can speed up the process that they're going to go through. We, uh, we feel so I don't think there's any role we have, or oh, I don't feel I have a role. I mean, you could say, oh, I'm a nightclub promoter, but I don't feel I'm not a nightclub promoter. I'm just someone that's organising this for the group. To it, bring it, people to together. To bring people together, yeah. But it's more just creating a medium. <laughs> Do you think um, parties like this, clubs like this, are important for our generation today? Any generation. Why? Any generation. Why? It's a learning process in life and communicating with other people is a very important thing of everyone's evolution, you know? So would you say the two main reasons from what you've said for living are having fun and learning. 
Well, well, they're not the two main reasons. They're one of the you know main reasons. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for living, but you know, evolving and learning. I mean, that's just like a really sort of major sort of thing to say, isn't it? Really. Like, and and the two can go hand in hand. Go, of course they can. Definitely. Learning is fun, or it can be quite actually distressing sometimes. Of course, you know. Well, when you say that's when you learn the most. What? When you're having fun? Oh, when you're stressed out and not having such yeah. fun. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know whether really? it's. I don't. I don't know whether you learn the most having fun or having a bad time. But I think I don't know. Well, you don't have more learning. I don't know. What? What do you? What's? What's your thoughts on on the concept that that at the moment there is something changing in the consciousness of of people on this planet generally? Um, do you think, do you, would you agree that perhaps people's consciousness is elevating itself through some kind of like positive force at work in the environment and in, 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 in planetary consciousness generally? Totally, totally. Youth culture on a, on a global basis is, is awakening and it's, it's a force that's not been seen before. Before there's, there's always been youth, there's always been uh, young people that are angry at the system. But I think now, I mean, on a personal I've been, been travelling around the world for five years. Everywhere I've been, the, the same story is in people's heads. Australia is there, in, in, in Australians, in the people that are in that scene. You go to another scene, in India is there. I mean, a lot of it does stem from there. You go to Tokyo, same story, same people. You come back to England, England's like... Um, England, I mean, England's def definitely going to be a centre of it. It's like meant to be a heart chakra of the planet. So it's, I feel a lot of people have turned up here and been drawn to here saying, I don't know, it's happening and it's a bit strange to sort of try and relate to them and say, well, what is this it? Is it the same it that I'm talking about that I feel is happening? And I don't know, there's just been a lot of affirmations I mean, on a personal basis. I seem to have had a lot of affirmations from people saying, it's happening. And some, some things are staring everywhere you go. People you meet, there, there is a buzz out. Uh, I don't think there's been a buzz like this before. It's, it's unspoken as well, which is it's all, almost telepathic, or could be said to be telepathic. <laughs> Um, the essence for me to all of the dancing is shamanistic. When people, if they're at a rave for 20,000 people or 10 people, when they get high and they dance, 
they're getting into the shamanistic realm, um, whereby they're tapping into a certain rhythm, or sensual people ta tapping into certain rhythms, and the rest of the people are following them. I think this is in, in every dance, in every society, without us even knowing it. The whole essence of it is quite primitive. I suppose the whole shamanistic thing is, the sh you know, the shaman was a healer, and dance to me has to be therapeutic, and I think England certainly needs healing. Why, why are you wearing this on your forehead? What is it? Oh, right. Someone put it there ages ago and I forgot that I had it on. Well, well why would you say someone had put it there? Well, because it's like the whole sort of part of India, you know, everyone wears them in India and stuff. You think the the music scene, the dance scene, at the moment is necessary to um, the evolution of our generation. Yeah, I think it's always been very important to dance and to express yourself, you know. And now it's not just dancing; it's it's really that expressing. It's not to have, you know. It's it's more just catharsis, get it all out. Because there's, there's nothing left to do anymore apart from the real thing, so to say. We, we tried all the other ways. We had masks on our faces and clinging on to different things. All this is, we're tired of it. We just want to relax and enjoy this planet, I think.
That's so you think people do this when they dance and they let go? I mean, not to everybody, but it has started. It's the people have found something on these dance floors, definitely. Something they don't, you know, let go of. And it's just accelerating. It's, the future looks very good, I think. Well, the music will always change, but the essence of it, or the fad or the fashion will always change, but the essence of it is music, which is a, a universal language, and hopefully people will awaken from this narcotic stupor that they've been in for the last few years. I mean, drugs are a catalyst for it, but um, any society has always had the dance, and I think the dance, in a way, a certain not organisational factor, but a certain unity has to come out of that. On a personal level, um, I'm more interested in the, the shamanistic thing than the actual parties. The club, hopefully, is a cross-section. In fact, it is a very big cross-section of society, from you know the unemployed to the sons of um, judges, barristers, etc. To me, there's, there is no point in just doing a club. That magic that's created on a dance floor, that unity when people do let go and they do gel together has to go back out into the street and that has to go out in daytime, not in a nocturnal sense, which is what a club is. It has to go back out into the populace. I almost believe that when this energy is created, people are suddenly very open to anything. I mean, evolution, if that's what you want to call it, they are going up a rung. But it has to go out. It, can't, uh, it becomes stagnant if it just remains in a club. I don't personally believe that people can dance together for hours and hours and not be affected and not drop the, the social barriers or the class restrictions that have been imposed on them through indoctrination. But how to retain that is, is the difficult thing. I think if there's a consistency and it keeps on going and going and going and people realise they are playing like children and dancing with people from every background, then hopefully that not won't become indoctrinated, will will become a part of their character. And they'll spread that to to their friends and on and on and on. And, you know, like a butterfly effect.
what what do you think of the energy generated here tonight? Tonight is not so. Uh, I think many people are a bit tired of the, the whirly gig thing, the shamanarchy in the UK on Sunday, and it's rainy, so not many people come tonight. But it used to be full on. It used to be very good energy. You're not from Britain, are you, Peter? No, I'm not. So, what do you think of Britain? What do you think of British people? I think uh, I've been here a couple of times before, but I've never seen anything like what's happening now. It's a very good scene, and I think because the English old way is so conservative, the people that do break out from that, they, they really have something to say, you know? and know what not should be done, so to say, and find their ways. And that, that's the whole thing as well, we're getting independent, you know? People be able to, to, to do their own thing, grow food, just travel about, build their own vehicles if that's necessary, or do a bit of busking, a bit of juggling, and be able to travel. We don't need the establishment so much anymore. So what would you say you've learnt from travelling? It's fun to live. How do you see society evolving ultimately as a result of the influence of uh, go culture, club culture, and house culture generally, with the uh, melting pot of ideas, both esoteric, uh, fashion, um, and sociological, that are being uh, transmuted through the medium of the club scene at the moment. Any club, from a business point of view, will always be judged. Um, for its economic value. I think the age of materialism um, and this economic plenty is diminishing and through parties, through clubs there is a spiritual awakening, even if people don't know it, that is coming back to the West and that is that is the thing that will flourish. It has to lead, lead on to something um, spiritual. I don't really like the term spirituality, it's quite, it's bandied around. If people can become centred, that's a start. If they can live their lives 
in a normal way. I don't mean in a fake way, which constitutes consumerism, living a life that's been sold to them through advertising, which they don't necessarily like or want or can even live up to. Um, then that's a start, if they can just get back to zero and go from there. They don't necessarily have to be spiritual, but if they can just become centered. Any club is a business, any, you know, you know, that's obvious it's in the Western world, but that is not the point of doing it. The point is to turn England on again, and England is the place that it's about to happen. It is happening in England. It's a centre for all sorts of things. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> has something to do with the onset of the age of Aquarius perhaps? Uh, I don't know what you, I mean, those predictions and those times, I mean, I can't, I can't believe in things until I see them. I don't think I believe already in what I see anyway, because I think, I do feel, yes, you could call it the age of Aquarius, but I don't know the age of Aquarius scenario to say, to talk about it coherently, but I'd say there's definitely a, an evolution in man's consciousness, they say, the man's evolved physically as best we can. We've got two arms, we've got hands, fingers, two eyes. We work pretty well physically, so the next step is a, of evolution is mental. And it happen, evolution does happen very fast, mental evolution. And I think now, in, in the youth, in the sort of 1990s, something is definitely happening. Do you think the youth of today are much more switched on uh, from an intellectual standpoint than perhaps they were in the 60s? Or before that, in the fifties. I, I mean, I think um, not not with, not with any sense of uh, we we know something that they didn't know in the sixties. We probably know as little as they knew in the sixties, but we know what mistakes was made in the sixties. We can we can see what sort of things went wrong there, where it didn't turn in the right direction. Hopefully, how we can keep the direction running. And I think now there's probably a lot more spiritual affirmation flying around, and there's a there's such a need now, a sense of urgency to get something done. It's like you're on, you're on the brink of something. So basically we've got to get our shit together to do something to almost like save the planet. <laughs>
perspective um, from, say, an ideological point of view, um, by your experiences traveling abroad in Goa, for example? For the first time in my life, my barriers completely came down. While the Gulf War was going on, which was the epitome of the Western world, um, the morning that the Gulf War broke out, I was standing, or rather moving, dancing on a dance floor with a thousand people from every part of the world, completely cross-culture. People were crying, people were smiling, people were laughing. Um, but they were dancing. And I remember the morning that was the next morning of this night of absolute hell because people, there were many people there whose families were involved in the war, you know, in the war or in those areas. A lot of people couldn't leave India, they couldn't fly out. Um, a lot of people couldn't actually go home. They didn't want to go home. The morning that you know, the sun rose, the look on these, the, the people's faces was something incredible. It was the most extreme celebration of life that I've ever experienced. And a friend walked up to me and she was literally, you know, in tears. And she said, is this normal? You know, are we normal? And I remember saying, or talking to her and saying, well, what is happening in the so-called normal world is destruction and killing. And if that's normal, then I don't want to be part of that. I really don't. Um, I don't think we really know how to celebrate life anymore. I think people are learning, they're relearning the essence of how to celebrate life. We're so programmed with death that when life slaps us or love slaps us in the face, we don't necessarily even realise, we don't recognise it. It's that powerful, it's that abstract from our everyday consciousness. I think maybe five, six years down the line, the people that have parted, the people that have danced, will suddenly realise what effect it has had on them. But now, most of these people are probably so immersed in what they're doing, and hopefully they won't get lost in the labyrinth of it. But a few, as I say, a few years down the line, finger, they'll know, they'll be there. Those barriers were knocked down, you know, on the morning after the, after the Gulf War started. They were knocked down, and to keep them down is a difficult thing. Is to keep them, is to remove your prejudice, whether it be sexual or ethnic or whatever. To remove it and keep it way out of your consciousness. That's the difficult one. Bring those barriers down. <laughs> Thank you.
So if you're sound and you're into sound, watch this space. Do you think um, is 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 the cause of uh, all of these people actually thinking in a way um, in the same manner and 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 steering their aims and ambitions towards one ultimate goal together? What do you think is the root cause of all of that? I think it's an, a natural life force energy. It's something that is. I mean, life's a bit mad it's it's energies that we can't contend with and I think it's nature's way, a way of like uh making a change um in human consciousness. And I think because it has to happen, it's deemed that it will happen in a certain form, whether it will work on a big scale or whether it is just part of like all the fluctuations and frequencies of that make up sort of life's complexity that it's just a natural thing that's happening that people are getting this idea in their head that as much as you go through so many ideologies and sort of political ideals that this ones that are appearing now are obviously new because there's always going to be new things this won't be the last be all and end all of it but this is something that's sort of like flowing but it's a natural energy it's i don't know nature's way of almost like locking in to to the individual but then to the group and then to the, the feeling hopefully excellent so if you're sound, and you're into sound, watch this space.